here in this worksheet there is every way they have asked on histograms in your uh, final exam for statistics one so you have all of those there and then all of the answers extracted for you and in fact every single year they will ask you they do ask a question in the final exam on representing data and one of the main ways they do that is through histograms so we're gonna do a question a good archetype a good example of this how they like to ask it and what they like to do is they like to give you a table of frequencies and in this case the table is uh, the times by a bunch of people, 1,140 people in fact, that uh, solve to solve a puzzle and those um, times are seen here so between 0 and 20 seconds 320 people do it and they want you to draw a histogram of this information so let's do that and a histogram always has on the y-axis you have the frequency density not the frequency, the frequency density and on the x-axis you have the class width or the um, the time here, the time t and the frequency density is just um, equal to the frequency over the um, class width or interval width whatever you want to call it, I'll call it class width so let's find those for this, so for the first first one, so you can need your calculator so the frequency density here so we can say frequency density of this first um, bar or whatever you want to call it is 320 which is the frequency divided by the class width which is um, 20 right 0 to 20 so it's 20 so the first frequency density is 16 the next one will be 280 divided by the class width which is again 20 so that's 14 this one will be 220 again divided by 20 which is 11 and this one we can see now that the class width has actually um, doubled in size so the class width is 40 60 to 100 so 220 divided by 40 is 5.5 and 14 and 100 to 140 well this is going to be 100 divided by 40 so you've got all your frequency density values there and the reason that we use frequency density is because it, uh, f the measure of density in general for uh, making comparisons between things, uh, for example if you were to make comparisons between different histograms, the frequency density is a really good measure, um, it's a good comparative metric or, um, for you to do that. You know because these um, class widths here they vary in uh, size so the frequency density um, is a good measure for things. So let's plot this stuff you have here. So let's plot on, this would be a good one, would be let's say 2.5, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20 for the frequency densities. And then the class was, well, 20 would be a great one. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and then at the end, 140. So let's plot this. Well, the first one is 16, and I'll try and draw this, but it'll probably not look too great. Um, 16 for this interval, so we get a bar of goes up to 16, so 16 will be here because each um, little thing here is 0.5, so this is 15.5, 16. And I picked 0.5 because I had 0.5 as my smallest um, thing here. So the next one, so that's the next one will be four, for 14 between 20 and 40. So 14 is two down here. Whoop. So that would be your next bar. Between 40 and 60 is 11. So it's 11 is there. And then 60 to 100 is five and a half. So it's here. To 100 is five and a half and. 100 to 140 is 2.5, so 2.5 is this line there. And actually what you'll notice with uh, frequency density is, well, the frequency then is equal to the class width times the frequency density, so this is frequency density times the class width. Well that is just the area of these bars, just an interesting note in case you forget it or something. Well, so like if you look at this bar here, well the frequency of um, people completing the puzzle between 100 and 140 is 100. 
So 100 people do that. Well, the area of this bar, because the height here is 2.5 and the length here is 40, well, 40 times 2.5 is 100, so the frequency, so the area of this is 100, which is also the frequency. Just something to note. So that's you drawing that, and they've asked us a bunch of times. And then they usually ask something else to do with a calculation to do with your data. And in this case, they ask you to estimate the mean. And for group data, you have on your formula sheet uh, this equation. Well, the sum of all your frequencies here is just the sum of um, all of these, which is the total number of people, which is, we can call that n. So n is 1, 140, 140. And the sum, so if you wanted to calculate the average here, so remember we're trying to find the uh, mean or the average of t. Well, the sum of the x values times the frequency, well, if you think about it, if you wanted the average, well, the frequency of, let's say, people between 0 and 20 is 320 people. But what's the middle value will be 10, right? The straight in the middle. So your x values will take the middle of these um, class widths or class intervals. So the first one we can say, so to sum this up will be, the first one will be halfway between 0 and 20 interval, which is 10, times the frequency of that interval, which is 320. And you just do that for all of them. So the next one would be 30 times 280. 30 times 280 plus uh, 50 times 220 plus and this one will be halfway between here 60 and 100 which is uh, 80 so you do 80 times 220 here Gonna run out of room plus Uh, plus the final one which is 120 halfway between there 120 um, times 100 this is going to be the average time to do the puzzle divided by 1140 which is your total and if you put that in I did this before is 45.8 seconds 5.8 seconds so that's your average time Cool, so that's a good example of this. Um, so this worksheet has all of those, all of the times in the past five years that they've asked on the histogram on for you to um, represent da data through a histogram. Um, so download that, go through it, and you'll be a dandy. Uh, but that's it from me. Please hit that like button for me, and don't forget to subscribe if you find my content useful. But I'll see you in the next video.